Thanks, Courtney. <laughs> All right. So welcome, everyone. This is the Hawk Talk. This session is all you need to know about residence life. So I'm joined here by some residence life staff, and we are going to have a little discussion tonight about residential living and things on campus you can look forward to. Some of you students um, are already enrolled for the fall, which is fantastic. Welcome. We can't wait to have you here. Some of you are still deciding. I'm glad you're here so you can learn more. We always say it's, it's best to ask questions and learn before you make that decision. So I'm glad you're all taking the time to spend some time tonight. I'm Jill Cardinal. I'm an admission counselor for the office as well as uh, the event coordinator for the admission office. So, and this is how we do events this year, right? Um, we, um, again, are holding these sessions throughout uh, the spring. There are more coming up. Feel free to join any of them. And as a bonus, any of them that you attend, you are gonna get a raffle ticket drawing. You can have as many raffle tickets as many Zoom sessions you attend. We have some great prizes at our senior party, which is April 29th, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, join that night for some great prizes. So with that, I'm gonna kick us off here and um, start this conversation going. So I'm joined by um, Stephanie and Anisha, our students at Ripon, and then Courtney and Mamadou are both staff in the Residence Life Department. And uh, Mamadou, why don't you start with your introduction and go around and then we, we'll get into it. Sounds good. Hi Perfect. everybody, my name is Mamadou Diallo. I'm the Residence Hall Director for the Quad and I'm also the Assistant Men's Basketball Coach here at Ripon College. Hi everyone, my name is Courtney Burned. I am the residence hall director for Scott Hall and this is my second year here. Stephanie? Hi, my name is Stephanie Boahin. I'm a senior chemistry biology major, Francophone studies slash French minor. I am the student assistant, um, I'm the student assistant to the hall director in the quad. So I am um, Mamadou's favorite assistant. And yeah, and I've been an RA since my freshman year, so that's kind of cool. Great, Nish. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Inisha. I'm a biology major, pre med, and I am an RA, which is a resident assistant, uh, specifically for Anderson, which is a residence hall located in the Quad. And this is this has been like my first year being an RA. And I, I I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Lindsay, can I just add, Anisha literally lives upstairs from me, so. Great. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Stephanie's my well, boss. And both Nisha and Stephanie have worked and work in the admission office for us. That's cool, too. Um, and we'll explain, as some of them uh, mentioned, different uh, residence halls. So I'm sure we'll talk a bit about those names and get you familiar. But um, I'll turn it back over to you, Mamadou, if you want to get us started. Sounds good. Let me get this PowerPoint shared. You bet. And I gave you permission to share, right? Um, you did, yeah. Okay, perfect. Beautiful, Mama Do. <laughs> oh no! If you click share. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 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 So welcome everybody. Um, we're about to go through um, a couple of the first year residence halls here and then um, a lot of other information. So um, you might want to have, you know, paper pen in handy um, to jot down some information if you would like. Let's start here. So um, we're going to start off here with housing options for first year students. So the three options are Scott Hall, Tri-Dorms and Johnson Hall. As you guys know, Scott Hall is Courtney's residence area. So a little information about Scott Hall. Um, Scott Hall is co-ed with three distinct areas known as East, Middle and West Scott. Um, it is a bit confusing, I'll tell you guys that now. Um, like, I still get lost there, to be honest with you all. So um, whoever is going to be assigned to Scott Hall, get ready to be lost a little bit for your first couple months there, okay? Um, 
So East Scott houses first year men and women as well as sophomore, um, some upperclassmen. Um, and also Middle Scott houses primarily first year men. Uh, West Scott will house co-ed upperclassmen. Um, and Scott Hall is in, within walking distance to the commons, which is the, um, the dining center here on campus, the library, the mail room, the spot, which is another um, eating option here on campus as well. And then all your academic buildings. This is um, some pictures that I put together for y'all to see of um, Scott Hall. Um, the first one is of the front, that's on Thorn Street, um, the front entrance of Scott Hall. The middle picture is um, one of the suites in Scott Hall. So that's pretty much um, right there. That's pictured is you know the common area, um, and then there's like two rooms, you know, um, that connect to the common area as well. And then that photo on the right is a picture of a room in Scott Hall. Another one of the first year dorms is um, Tri Dorms, and that is primarily a first year female residence hall. Um, and that is comprised of Evan, Wright, and Sat, correct me if I'm wrong, Shaler? Shaler. Mm -hmm. Shaler? Okay, mm -hmm. Shaler Hall. Um, and that is walking distance to the commons as well, the library, the mail room, the spot, and all your academic buildings. This is some pictures here of tri dorms. Um, as you can tell, this is the front of it. Um, and then we've got, you know, a couple pictures of here um, in the in the rooms. Okay. The other one would be Johnson Hall. Um, this is an all female residence hall. This does include sororities as well as um, independence. Um, and then it's also home to uh, several first year students and upperclassmen. Um, it is also within walking distance to the commons, library, Maryland spot, and all academic buildings. Okay. So first year students, you guys are lucky. You guys are close by everything. So you guys won't have any issues making it to class or, or anything like that, or I don't know, dining hall, going to the mailroom library and all that good stuff. And this is the first picture is off of Thorn Street. Um, this is the front entrance of Johnson. Um, the middle picture is a, another area um, here on campus that shows Johnson Hall. And then the last picture is a room in Johnson, a double. So as you guys know, oh, the pictures are not showing, no. Okay. Is so, it a picture of my face? <laughs> yes, yes, that was actually a picture of you. Yeah. Hello, so, well, here I am. <laughs> you guys have met her. So um, that's Courtney. She's a Scott uh, Residence Hall Director. And um, Try and Taj is um, M. Dietrich. She is the Residence Hall Director, but I was gonna show you guys a picture of M, but for some reason that didn't go through. So I'm sorry about that, but you guys will meet her next year. So, so how are roommates determined? So you'll be matched with your roommate before arriving to campus um, for your first year. Uh, roommate decisions are made by residence life staff after you fill out the community preference questionnaire, which can be found online on the ripon.edu website under the housing section. The questionnaire helps us determine roommate compatibility with questions such as, do you have to have absolute quiet to study? Um, you know, um, between what hours do you prefer to go to bed or wake up at? Um, you can, you and a friend can also list one another as roommates and we'll work um, our best to place you guys together, okay? Uh, please take into account the type of environment you want to live in um, to be academically successful here at Ripon and be honest in your responses, okay? Um, you can also contact the Residence Life Office at any time to update your answers to those questions. You should expect to receive a um, rooming assignment by mail, I would say mid to late July. Is there anything else you would like to add to that, Courtney? 
No, that was a good um, little summary there. Um, I would definitely say and kind of echo Mamadou when uh, we ask you and challenge you guys to fill out that um, form as honestly as possible. Um, if you want someone who's very organized um, or um, like orderly, then put that down. We're, we're gonna find someone who uh, matches up with you the best way. Or um, I know there's a question on there um, about um, um, like different extracurriculars that you're involved in. Put down some things that you're you're interested in. So then maybe someone else listed. Um, let's for example, like if you're really into gaming, we can find someone else who's into gaming. So maybe you could game together. Or um, people who really enjoy um, psychology or whatever. Um, the more information you give us um, is totally helpful and we will take any information that you can give us. Um, one other thing is some coaches on campus, um, since they'll be meeting you prior to or they, they've gotten to know you a lot um, in the time coming up to your move-in day, or um, I should say housing assignments, um, they may pair you with someone um, that they think that you're going to be successful with. That's very common with um, the men's sports um, for sure, um, but it's definitely popular in the, in the women's sports as well, like um, volleyball, um, sometimes tennis, depending on how many ladies there are. Um, but a lot of football guys get paired together, a lot of basketball guys, um, just because there is a larger um, quantity of them coming in. Jill, did you have something to add? Yeah, I was going to maybe say, um, Stephanie and Nish, maybe you could talk about your first roommates. And yeah. If you yeah. Hammer on what Courtney said about being honest in your um, questionnaire, because I wasn't. <laughs> That's funny when I say that, but I wasn't. <laughs> I was, I, I think I wrote how I was organized or whatever, but I'm not. And my roommate, pretty organized, sleeps early, I sleep late. I was, I basically put the opposite of what I was and I literally got that. <laughs> um, the only thing, the, the, I think what they do is really good too though because we're both interested in science. So we had classes together, which was mm -hmm. really helpful, like knowing someone. So that's why like being honest is really good because they try their best to pair you with someone that fits. So it didn't work for me because you know I wasn't really honest with that part. Um, but yeah, I think my first, my roommate, um, we, she's, we, I still see her around. We're not the closest. I mean, you don't have to be best friends with your roommate. Um, but we're still in the same classes and things like that. So yeah, it's like your first friend. Uh, yeah, I filled it out as honestly as I could. So mine was a little bit different, but yeah, I was matched with, um, Liv, who I'm still like, uh, pretty close with. And yeah, we, uh, have the same major we both want to be doctors uh, we both have the favorite like we, our favorite cereal and favorite iced tea so like, we were pretty matched like to a t it was really funny how that worked out um we did not have any roommate conflicts my freshman year or anything like that and then we decided to room sophomore year together um two but then she broke her foot so <laughs> she got moved to a different room but um yeah really good so just make sure you fill out the form as accurately as possible it's Oh, you're not the most organized just put that it's okay so then that way your roommate doesn't have to be like annoyed with you because you said you're organized yet your half of the room is dirty so you know respect both sides but yeah it was pretty nice i feel like anisha was calling me out with that but okay <laughs> <laughs> my bad my bad <laughs> sorry boss thank you for sharing that um so next we're gonna have um Anisha talk about her duties as an RA, and we're gonna have Stephanie talk about her duties as a Sahad. Yes, so um, being an RA, like I said, as a resident assistant, and basically with that um, job, you basically live on floor with other residents and you're in charge of a floor. So I'm in charge of second floor Anderson, and I basically make sure, short story to keep my residents safe and alive <laughs> um, and so then we also are in charge of programming events so we have to do I think maybe four or five programs um, a semester and those programs are just to like you know facilitate you know a social event you know to get people out of their rooms um, so that can be like a cookie making night um, it can be 
uh, a gaming night. It literally could be whatever you and your residents want. And then aside from programs and making sure residents are safe, uh, we also have duty nights. So um, you have like your rounds where you just check on like whatever, um, what is it, like whatever dorm space you're in, like you go on the different rounds in different dorm buildings and stuff like that, just to make sure everything looks good, you know, no broken doors, no broken stalls. Um, and then if you were to see that, you just um, report it and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just have to keep my residents safe, healthy and alive, so yeah. And I tell you, it's not as easy as it seems to keep college students alive. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, I'm a student assistant. <laughs> I'm the Sahad. So that's the student assistant to the Hoard director. We have three Sahads, one in the quad, um, which is kind of like further from campus, um, one in Taj, which is like Tri, um, the apartments in Johnson Hall combined, like that whole area. That's one, um, well, technically two, because there's one in the campus apartments and one in Tri. And then we have one in Scott too. So basically the job of the Sahad is um, basically the RA to all the other RAs. Um, your Sahad helps you with like programming, making sure you turn in your program, um, your program proposals, which is what RAs turn in when they're trying to um, organize a program. Um, we make sure that RAs are mentally, physically, and physically sane, you know, it's not as easy as it is um, to be an RA. It may seem fun and all, but you're basically being a mom to grown adults. It's not easy. Um, um, we also, like I also help uh, Mama do specifically anything that he wants me to do, be, be it um, maybe checking in on RAs, maybe any miscellaneous, miscellaneous stuff that has to do with our staff, um, planning um, staff bonding events, to make sure that we're all staying together and having fun as a staff. Um, also, since I live in Anderson and only Anisha and I are in that building, I kind of act as a second RA supporting Anisha with whatever she may need because you know she's basically taking care of everyone here. So if there's anything that she may need from me to, I'm here to help. And being a Sahad is kind of nice because even though you're not an RA, you still get to build a relationship with the residents. Um, for me, for instance, like before I came to the quads, I lived kind of um, at the tri area, which was closer to the academic buildings. So I didn't get to see like the, the athletic side of campus. I was so used to the academic side of campus. And so coming here, I got to like kind of build a relationship with a lot of athletes that I probably never spoke to my entire college career. So just saying that to see that like this different aspects of this job that helps you, exposes to you and kind of like, you know, brings, I suppose you just basically makes you talk to more people than you normally would. So yeah. Oh, and real quick to add in, also RAs are there as like support to the residents. So if there's ever like a roommate conflict, um, you will go to your RA, or if you just want to like talk to your RA, if you're going to like personal stuff or like family stuff and you feel comfortable talking to your RA about it, um, that's kind of like our role there too. We just want to make sure residents, especially first years are as comfortable as possible because you know it's a big transition you know living from home to there so yeah always do that kind of facilitation as well thank you stephanie and anisha so next here um i'm going to talk about some of um my duties as a resident hall director here on campus uh for the quad or you know there's times where we're actually on duty as well um, I believe it's every three weeks, Courtney, right? So every three weeks, um, one of us is, well, there's a hall director that's on duty every week, um, but each, each individual hall director is on duty every three weeks. Um, so first thing I would say is that, you know, first and foremost is promoting the safety and welfare of all residents. Um, we're really big on that and we gotta make sure that every student here is safe. Um, staff supervision, that is pretty much us supervising our each and individual staff. Um, so like Stephanie, Anisha, um, they're on my staff here in the quad. Courtney has her own staff and um, M has um, her own staff as well in Taj. Um, student conduct, um, what that means is that pretty much if you know you break any policies, or anything like that, um, you will be meeting with a resident hall director. Um, another thing as well is 
really big on encouraging the development of educational and um, social and personal growth uh, programs here on campus. So those are the programs pretty much that our RAs um, put on. And um, that is what Stephanie, one of her duties is what she supervises is those program uh, proposals and all that good stuff. Um, another thing as well as relationship building and student interaction on a daily basis with residents. Um, so we're in our offices eight to five, Monday through Friday. Um, and then we also each, each one of us live on campus as well. So I live in the quads. I actually live in Beauvais. Um, Courtney lives in Scott and um, M lives in Johnson. So pretty much we're here 24 seven. Um, you know, you're able to see us, we're able to see you. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Courtney? Yeah. Um, all right. So the RAs and the Sahads and RHGs are not meant to scare you or um, we're kind of meant to be your friend if you need one um, or um, someone you can go to to ask questions. Um, there's a lot of um, people who come in and out of my office who just want to hang out and chill or I do have a, a dog and cat on campus. So they come in, um, I guess not as much now with COVID, but once that gets a little bit better, they'll come and hang out. I'm in my apartment with my dog and my cat, or I'll put on, right now I have like a March Madness bracket going. Um, we're, we're, even though we do live on campus with you and um, we are um, holding you to different policies and making sure that you are healthy and you're safe and whatnot. We're also here to be your first friend as well. Um, me and Mamadou are on the younger side of the scale. We're only 25 years old, so not too far off from um, you guys. So we're, we're meant to be just your first friend and if you um, need anything. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, so next we are gonna go over what to bring to campus. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have an idea of like what to bring, um, but still wanting to go over some stuff. Um, I know it's kind of, it kind of could be nerve wracking, right? Leaving home for the first time, not knowing what to pack with you and bring. Um, so like I said, you might want to have a paper and a pen ready because some good stuff here for y'all. So I would say a planner for sure. Um, obviously you're gonna need pencils, pens, um, highlighters, um, notebooks, note paper, binder, folders, calculator, a backpack, note card, post-its. Um, I believe here on campus as well, if you don't own a, a laptop at our library, you are able to check one out. Um, so that is pretty much there for you if you don't own a personal laptop, okay? Um, room and personal supplies to bring pillows, blankets, and bed sheet sets. Um, you don't want to be the one that has the same bed sheets the whole school year. Cause if you got a roommate, it's not going to be good. Okay. Um, a waste basket, alarm clock. I know phones nowadays do have, you know, your own alarm clock on there or whatever, um, that could wake you up. But I mean, if you want to buy you know, another one outside of using your phone, um, you're more than welcome to as well. Um, laundry supplies and baskets, hangers, uh, towels, robes, um, bucket or basket for shower supplies, um, personal products, um, shower shoes. I would totally recommend that 110%. You don't wanna be the one that goes into the showers barefoot, okay? Um, Medication, um, a foam topper, um, and storage bins, and a fan, okay? So what other supplies um, could you bring? Mamadou? Yes? I just, I, we have a question, um, I wanna answer it. So someone's asking, what are shower shoes? I'm going to say they're like flip flops, right? Some sort of plastic sandal ish thing, right? <laughs> um, you could actually, if, if I were you, 
um, when I was in college, what I went, what I did, I went to like the local Walmart. They were like, honestly, like two dollars. They were like the ones with the kind of like they go into like your toe. I don't even know what they're called, like thong sandals or whatever. I don't even know, but buy those. They're like two dollars. You don't have to spend that much money, and they'll last you for the whole year. You could buy one every year, as a matter of fact. So they're literally they look like they look like this and they have like holes in it. So obviously the water can fill, uh, go yep. through and it's like made of rubber. I've yep. had these since my freshman year, literally like lifesaver. If you, you don't want to get feet fungus, nothing like that. So <laughs> Another question. Um, and I just want to again, cover this. Is there TV or mini fridge rentals? Any of you'd like to answer that question, please? Um, I don't believe there is TV rentals, um, but mini fridges, mm -hmm. do we do we do that here, Courtney? Yep. I think there's a, yeah, there's a small amount that you can. Um, but also if you coordinate with your roommate or suite mates, if you get a suite, um, sometimes one person will bring that and one person will bring the TV. Yep. Um, you don't have to bring like four of each thing because um, right. that would be a very busy room. Right. Um, yeah, once you get your house assignment, you can kind of coordinate with people. And again, that's going to be probably like mid-July, if I'm not mistaken, for housing. And then you can communicate with your roommate. And just like they said, you know, hey, you bring the fridge, I'll bring the TV, you know, bring whatever video gaming or whatever the, the case may be. Um, someone else is asking, what is an Ethernet cord? Okay. Um, so an Ethernet cord is... Um, it's pretty much a, a core that you could connect to your, um, to the jack in your wall that's in every single dorm room here on campus. Mm -hmm. And then you connect that into your, um, your laptop or your desktop if you decide to bring a desktop as well. Um, what that does is provide you internet pretty much. That's not wireless, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we also have wireless internet all throughout campus here. Um, so if you choose not to bring a, um, an ethernet cord, then you'll still be completely fine with um, internet access here on campus. A lot of my my gaming residents bring ethernets because apparently it gives more ping. I don't know what those words mean. But. <laughs> yep, yep, that is true. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I'm answering it, but you can maybe address it to all. Um, someone's asking about, is there a pharmacy on or near campus for medication and then a doctor's office? Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, there is technically two. So we have Rip and Drug, which is literally one minute off campus. So that's really important, especially for students who decide not to bring a car to campus. You can totally walk there. It's like a three minute walk from campus. Um, so yeah, it's called Rip and Drug, and it has its own pharmacy, and our nurse will actually work with Rip and Drug and call in, like, whatever type of um, drug that needs to be called in to pick up at the pharmacy, um, and she can call that in for you, um, and you can all, like, call, like, your, like, your doctor provider to tell them, oh, I'm going to move my medication to Rip and Drug location, um, and then if you do have a car, you can go um, a little bit further in town, which is Walgreens. We also have a pharmacy in the Walgreens there, which is about um, like a five minute drive off campus. So definitely up to you, but um, yeah, we do have that as well. Great. Back to you, Mamadou. Thank you. Those were all good questions, by the way. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have some time here, I'm sure, briefly to right. um, go over some things too and everybody chat, so. That's good. So, um, oh, I don't think I went over. So um, Xbox, PlayStation 2, if you would like to bring that, that's completely fine. Um, cable cord, microwave, iron and iron board, um, and an ethernet cord, okay? Um, some betting information here. So um, in Taj, I mean, um, yeah, in Taj, like the tri-dorms, you're going to have um, 75 long mattresses. This is standard twin. Um, so any type of standard um, bedding would work perfectly fine. Um, but in, I don't, I heard, I believe for sure I heard today in Scott, 
that they do have um, twin XL mattresses there. I'm not sure if that's still true, Courtney. Yes, we got some tall folk in this area. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, and Scott, you will be needing um, pretty much an extra long XL um, bedding sheet. And for those of you, as you're looking, if you are the first in your family, a lot of places, Amazon, Target, Kohl's, TJ Maxx, they do carry the twin XL. Once it gets closer to the school starting, you'll easily see those. So you don't need to order them special. You'll find them in some of those kinds of stores. Yes. And Johnson does as well too, okay? So th some things to leave at home. Um, routers, like I said, we have Wi-Fi everywhere here on campus. Um, halogen lamps, candles, incense, um, air conditioners, um, items with any open heating element, such as hot plates, toasters, toaster ovens, and pizza ovens, um, cats, dogs, and um, cage animals. So if you would like to have like an emotional support animal, um, you would have to go through um, the director of residence life, which is Mark Nicholas. Um, so I would suggest you get in contact with him if you would like to have an ESA on campus, okay? Um, some residence life tips. Um, you know, we already went over a couple of these already mm -hmm. with um, Courtney and um, Jill. Mm -hmm. Speaking about, so connect with your roommate once rooming assignments have been sent out, okay? Because um, you guys would want to talk about, you know, like deciding which roommate brings what before you guys arrive on campus. You don't want pretty much, you know, two fridges in there, two microwaves, two TVs, unless you guys, you know, like to play video games and stuff like that. TVs is fine, but like having some like extra futon in there or an extra couch, like some of that is just going to take up space, okay? Um, so you guys might want to connect with your um, your assigned roommate um, before before getting on campus, so you guys could get things figured out, and it'll save you guys a lot of money too. So instead of buying something that's already going to be in the room, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, Stephanie and Anisha is going to talk a little bit about um, what you can expect from living on a residential campus. Okay. So really quick, a residential campus means that you live on campus all four years that you're here. Or um, if you go extra years and you live on campus if you're going to school here. Um, I mean, I think that like as compared to maybe another place where you have like people living off campus and um, things like that, you get to have kind of like the full college experience and sense that you get to like meet different kinds of people. We have um, international students here. We have people from all over the country here. Um, mm -hmm. We have um, Greek life here. We have a lot of um, groups that are doing amazing things here. This I think is super involved um, and it, ha it gives you more opportunities to kind of like get, get involved and put yourself out there. Or even if you don't wanna put yourself out there and you wanna stay, you know, doing your own thing too, you can do that too. So I think it kind of, it gives you that opportunity to just like meet more people. Yeah. Yeah, going off of that, um, <clears throat> sorry. It definitely creates a community build because we all live on campus. So it definitely fosters in that community and type of environment where you do get to see those inter-networking and be like, you know, people from all walks of life. It's kind of fun, you know, just being able to go to like, hey, I'm gonna go to like my friend's room who may live like in a different dorm building. Let's say they live in Johnson, you know, I'm gonna walk to Johnson or, oh, I'm gonna walk to Anderson. And like, when you guys get here, you'll start to see that Ripon College is, it's not that big, but um, it's big enough where like, there's a lot of spaces, a lot, it's spread out a lot. Um, so you're definitely gonna still see new people. It's not gonna be the same people. Um, and it's just kind of fun just to everybody who's on campus because it's kind of like a controlled environment where like you're away from your parents, you know, so you have like that independence, but yet you're still like in a bubble, right? So I think that was one thing that I really liked as well is that I 
still have my sense of independence, but also my parents aren't hiding in the bushes. Um, so I think it's really awesome that I think 95% of the students live on campus. And I think like going to the point about Ripon being small, like, yes, it is small and you think you may know everyone, but I promise you, you don't. Um, I always like get surprised every time I'm like, wait, you're a senior? We're, we're in the same class, like we're graduating together and I've never seen you in Ripon. It just sounds crazy, but it's true. Like you rarely, you think you know everyone, but you don't. But then also like it gets, gives you the chance to kind of meet more people. Like you're, you, you're like, oh, I didn't know you well, let's be friends or something like that. And as Nish said, said, it's like a controlled, nice bubble where you can like focus on academics or whatever reason you're here, sports, you know, all that and still like have fun and still meet people and still do all the things you want to do in college, but still, you know, like focus on school. And it's not a suitcase college. So if you think about um, students from other schools that might go home on the weekends, like a lot, we don't have that. Most of our students really are sticking around on the weekends because there's, there's things to do. There's theater, there's, you know, uh, sporting events, there's music on campus, there's different events happening, residential assistance, again, plan things. So a lot of students really do stick around in that it's, it's not, you know, quiet on the weekends, there's things going on. Yeah. Going off of that, like, I literally live three hours away. I'm from, like, the Chicagoland South Suburb area, and I have never wanted to, like, go home for, like, a weekend just to, like, don't get me wrong, you know, when I first got here, I was a little bit homesick, but I wasn't homesick. I was like, I want to go home because there's just so many things to do, like, over the weekends and stuff like that. Like, we have a movie theater downtown, and then downtown is really nice. So I only go home on the break. So, like, fall break, spring break, winter break, summer break. I, yeah, so definitely there's so many things to get involved in on campus and do that makes you actually just want to stay on campus. Cool. So now we're on to questions. Mama Do, do you mind um, stop sharing and then we can maybe have the kids uh, you know, on screen and see each other, if that's cool. Perfect. And then again, students, if you're on, you may turn your video on if you haven't already. Um, we like to see everybody and chit chat. So um, feel free to have that on. And again, um, I don't want to step on your toes, Mama Do, but just if there's questions, this is a great time to, you know, kind of see where people's heads are at. I had a question. Okay. Yes, I. Um, so, it's Jaden. So, yeah. Um, so if it was a break, like, is it everyone's kicked, not kicked out, but like, because if people leave, like, can you say you weren't going to go back? Like, can you still stay in your dorm? Or is it like, say, like, at like in high school, right? You have a break, everyone goes home, right? Then school's. I guess off until you come back, right? Is it like that or like, can you still live there? Or how does that work? Yeah, I can answer that. Let's take me as a prime example. I am an international student, I'm from Ghana. So I literally live across the continent. Mm -hmm. So I can't go home for fall break. Um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, you can, you have the option of staying for fall break, spring break. Um, even in some special cases, you can stay for winter, not even special cases, you can stay for winter break and in special cases, you can stay for um, the summer. Um, mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. options for that too. So yeah, we, we give that option. And some people also like during the winter, um, during the fall break, spring break, because they work around campus, they just stay to work or they go home when they work late, they just stay mm -hmm. um, in their dorm rooms. There's, there's a lot. Of, yeah, you can do that. Definitely. So do you end up going back or do you just stick it out? Don't like oh, I go, I, I'm going home. I'll go home. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephanie, you're going to be staying here. Yeah, I'll go home. I went home in 2018. Hopefully I get to go home this um, break. Oh, too. But yeah, I'm staying in Ripon too. Yeah, That's I love really, Ripon too much. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Cool, cool. <laughs> Other questions that students have? Hi, Q. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's fun to see people I've seen before. <laughs> well, Jill, I will say one thing is um, for the whole like bringing like refrigerators and stuff. I highly recommend you just buy your own mini fridge instead of like renting just because in the end it's way cheaper. And yeah. like 
you're going to be here for four years, so you might as well. It's only like, well, there's some that cost like $50, always like 200 and you definitely yeah. get your money worth instead of yeah. just um, renting every year. So yep. that was a concern for people. Yeah. Did you talk, uh, I don't remember now, um, about lofting beds and things Did that come up? Oh, yeah, you can, if you want to loft your bed, you're more than welcome to. The only room or the only building that doesn't have lofts um, or you can't loft that furniture is Johnson. Um, but otherwise, you can rent a loft for the year, or the semester, and then once it's raised up higher, you can put stuff underneath, which makes it like easier if you want to fit a futon in there, if you have the three TVs because they're your suite mates <laughs> like to game or whatever. Um, but I think there's plenty of room even mm -hmm. if you don't loft. So it's totally up to you. Then there's the bed risers too, I've heard of that you can just kind of raise your bed up and have storage. But I don't know, do they, do you actually buy a bed riser or is it crates or do you guys know what those are? Yeah, you have to buy a riser. If okay. You, in Johnson, like the, you can actually like raise the beds in Johnson. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, yeah, you can just slide, slide it. Yeah, uh, just slide it. So you're like notches. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really high. Like Johnson, you probably wouldn't need it. It's kind of high enough, in my opinion. Maybe you, maybe you want to do more with that. But I wanted to add that I think on the Rippin Facebook page, they have like these videos of people showing their rooms. Yes. I think even two of my sorority sisters show their rooms um, yes. in Johnson. And it's just, it, it's really good to kind of have an idea of how the rooms look like. Um, yep. And like Kai's room was lofted. Her bed was, I think it was lofted. So you can also have an, no, I don't think so. It was lofted. You can just check the video and yeah, check to see, you know, how that looks like what lofting is versus just having a regular yep. bed versus things like that. So, yep. Yeah. Q, do you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask Stephanie what sorority was she in. Oh, what sorority, Stephanie? Oh, I did mention I was in sorority. I'm a Kappa Delta. Um, it, I don't know what I was going to say. Yeah, it's one of the three sororities we have on campus. We have Alpha Delta Pi, which I niche is in, then Alpha Chi Omega, Omega, and then Kappa Delta. Then I have a couple of questions. Um, can you reiterate what comes in the room, um, which I can tackle that, I believe. Uh, a double room is going to have two beds, two desks, two dressers, two closets, two lamps, two chairs, right? Chairs, yes. Um, what else? That's kind of your main stuff, right? Only tri only tri dorms, only tri dorms comes with lamps. Um, oh, okay, okay. Everyone, else, I don't believe it does, but okay, um, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, that that seems okay. Yeah. And then, how much is it to loft a bed? You know the pricing on that, Courtney, or anyone? I can look it up really quick. Okay, great. Chat. Yeah, we'll get that. And also, uh, uh, I have a question. There are heaters. There are heaters in each individual room too. Okay, uh, great. Good point. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't see who was going to ask a question. That was Franz. Franz, go ahead, Franz. Um, I have kind of like two separate questions. The first one being, you kind of mentioned that we some certain stuff we can bring like our scooters and skateboards allowed. And my second question is, you did mention closet space. So what's like the cap and amount of the amount of clothes and shoes you can bring on campus or kind of fit in your going to live with somebody else? Okay, so skateboards and yeah. scooters? scooters, if possible, yeah. Yes, you can bring those things and you can keep them in our bike storage areas in each area. Um, one thing you can't keep inside um, are like motorized scooters. Um, that could include just like one that's like a glorified scooter and then also like mopeds. You have to keep those outside. And then for clothing. Bring your whole closet. I would say I, you get your own closet, which is nice, um, and drawers. Mm -hmm. I would say a lot of people have the clothes that they need for the season that we're in. And then once it becomes winter, they take that out of either um, their bins that they have under their bed or mm -hmm. in the storage, or if they're close enough, they'll go home and get that. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, depending on how many clothes that you do have, some people can fit it. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people do the swap. Can you, near you talked about storage. Is there storage in the residence halls that students can use? Yep. Yep. Great. 
So the loft um, for the year is $170. Okay. Yep. Um, and that comes with a safety rail, a shelf, so like a, where you can put your phone at night, mm -hmm. and then insurance. But if you just get the loft and the safety rail, it's 130. So I would say that's pretty good. So I, I have something I'll add. So I'm pretty sure that all of the students on tonight have not probably been in a residence hall on Rippon's campus because of COVID. So we are just finalizing some things, but it's looking like the, the first part of June, we will have um, residence hall tours available for students who are enrolled. So um, we're working on details. It'll be part of the visit um, when you look at our visit calendar and you can look on there and you can come for a full tour if you haven't been on campus yet or wanna come back, or you can just simply do a residence hall tour and we'll take you in um, two, if not three of the buildings that you can see uh, a sample room just to kind of feel it out. It would be empty, but you would see again, what comes in it and kind of sizing. We'll show you a suite. And then um, if you're interested, you can see, you know, a lounge, the kitchen areas, uh, laundry facilities, things like that. So watch for that um, down the road a little bit. Like I said, we'll, we'll uh, put that out there for you so you know, but it will be on our calendar, likely for the first maybe two weeks or so of June. Because kids will be gone and we yeah. can finally kind of get you in there. Yeah, so would you, have to, would you have to schedule this? I'm sorry, I'm hearing more than one question. I heard someone say scheduling. Yes, it is something you would need to schedule through our regular visit calendar. And like I said, you'll see the time slots. You pick a time slot and it'll ask you, you know, do you want to do just the residence hall, like a half an hour? Or do you want to come and maybe your dad or your mom wants to come with you to see the whole campus again, you can do that too. But there'll be options in the visit calendar. And I'll put that in um, the chat um, just so you know how to find that. If you haven't visited campus yet, um, of course, we are um, holding visits, you know, daily and weekends um, through the rest of the semester. Someone else had a question that I didn't quite get. I think I may have been talking. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I was gonna, I was gonna plug our um, residence life Instagram if you want to see oh, different yeah. things that are going on on campus. Um, it's um, at Rippin Res Life. Um, feel free to follow us. Um, I'm one of the admins, so I'll definitely follow you back. Um, but yeah, I was planning on putting some videos or pictures up of different um residence halls um near the end of the year just in case you can't come here and i know covid's weird so um you can look at different things and plus there's a lot of videos on on there as well where you can see different places in the halls as well oops i didn't mean to i just sent that just to madeline hold on i i sent the uh <laughs> the, the link and i just went to madeline anyway okay. there we go and i'm gonna send it to everybody um but you can find um, on that link, um, it'll talk about the campus visits and the calendar at the bottom. And again, watch for that. Um, we'll probably have that up and going maybe in a couple of weeks um, if you wanted to come to campus to see that. So other questions? I got one. Um, so with the, the residence life, right? And your dorms. So how does it work? Say you want to do things with people, right? So how does that work? Like, is there rules with like, say, can you invite girls or guys or like certain areas you can intermingle with other people or like, how does that work? Or is mm -hmm. there some like also dress coded like rules like that stuff, like what you can do and what can't? Yeah, we, I was gonna say we have no rules, but we have rules. Um, <laughs> no, we definitely have rules. Have rules. <laughs> <laughs> there's no rules, there are rules. <laughs> I was about to say, there's no rules, but I was like, Stephanie, no. Um, yeah, you can you can go to any dorm you want. You don't have, that's no dress code. Um, that would be like boarding school. Well, don't walk and don't walk out like naked. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like some don't stuff. Like, wear clothes. Clap, whatever. You, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Um, you can get into yeah. any dorm until is it 11 p.m. Yeah, it, um, your, 11, your own card. Yeah, on weekdays, and I think one or twelve on weekends. So like. Can girls come in your? I know this sounds, but like, can girls come into your dorm then? I mean, I know like that yeah. could. Well, yeah. We're, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. That, is not a, that is not a what policy violation or anything. No. It's not? No. 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 Okay. You, it's not. People of opposite sex can be in rooms yeah. and in doors. Thought ask. Yep. Uh, um, and then um, there's and like, maybe, what? Sorry, maybe just, um, I mean, again, we don't know what will happen in the fall, but maybe talk about how COVID has affected visiting right now, maybe? Yeah. So in a given year, um, we know Normally, like outside guests are like totally welcome, like in a non pandemic year. But um, this year, especially last semester, um, outside guests were like restricted. Well, at first it was just like, you know, frowned upon, then it became restricted when COVID cases started to rise just in Wisconsin. Um, so, like, you can have any outside guests, but um, any given year. So, like, we're assuming next semester should go like, like a new normal. Um, I believe you can have um, outside guests stay with you for a total of, I think, four days. Um, yeah, so that's outside guests. Is that right? Yeah. And then also, like, for okay. And then um, people who just live on the, like, the campus over, so let's say you have a friend in Scott, um, they can totally come over whenever. Um, it's just ID may not work um, past, like, a certain time, like, maybe past 1 a.m., but he's not going to let you in to, like, your dorm building because everybody has 24 hour access to their own dorm building. So if I live in Anderson and let's say you live in Scott, you can come to Anderson at like 1 a.m. and I couldn't come to Scott at 1 a.m. But we could come to each like our own dorm room at like let's say 3, 7 a.m. because it's our dorm building. Um, but yeah, you, like and since the buildings are co-ed, meaning like your next door neighbors could be guys or girls, it doesn't really matter. I know some colleges do have like um, rules saying like only like the opposite sex can be on there for a certain amount of hours we don't really have that um but yeah so hopefully that answers your question yeah okay yeah so what's this like four days outside guests like do you just get some random stranger who can like live with you for four days no like, no if what? you let's say your brother wants to come visit he can Ooh. stay in your room with you for a certain amount of days again with your roommate's permission obviously yeah i was like but, is there gonna be enough space for all that like you let's just pack 20 people in the no store. no it's just saying you know let's say your cousin wants to visit you on the weekend okay. and you know they come over for the evening and on the weekend to hang out with you at college yeah. but um okay. and then you know again i think the biggest thing is that you are making sure that your roommate and you agree on these things that if there's guests whether outside guests or on campus guests that you guys agree with timing and things like that um, to respect each other's privacy. Um, and again, the security is the buildings are locked. No one can get in those buildings unless you have a key card. And again, um, the, the thing is you can get in your own dorm building anytime you want. You can get in other dorm buildings up until a certain point in the evening, you know, like again, 11 o'clock typically on a weeknight that you can get in until then. Are there like cameras and stuff then like inside or outside? Like how does that like? That's I mean, that's that's a secret, man. Candace. <laughs> <Secrets. laughs> nice What's one, Mamadou. Nice one. There you go. Yeah. You're not telling. Okay. How does hopefully <laughs> hopefully you don't have to find out the hard way, man. Right, right. Yeah. We got we got <laughs> eyes. We'll be sitting down with one of you. That's helpful, man. Yeah, we got eyes. Uh, so say like our school, like I mean in school, like, oh, you can't wear hoods, no hats, if your oh. phone rings no. or something's $25 fine is there anything like dress code or like no student handbook stuff like how does no okay because I was like no. so if you're just like in not like saying it is but if you're just in a classroom and like you're doing whatever does like anyone care like I know like say you watch tv or like some dude's sleeping like but the class still goes on it's like hey what are you doing you know so in the class I, I will say oh. I don't know maybe Steph and Anisha could talk about this a little bit more but yeah. I know some professors might be a little bit like with no hats in classes, sure. especially yeah. like, you know, during like um, exams and stuff like that for different mm -hmm. reasons. I don't know, maybe Steph and I, she, Anisha could speak more on that. Yeah, but there's no like definite like rule kind of thing, right? No. What about your like phone and stuff? Like, I mean, like if you're on your phone in class, is that like a thing? Not saying you would do that, but could be considered to learn. I would say professors are like, if you want to be on your phone and fail my exam, good for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know if it's like okay, you're at yeah. school, so, so yeah. I guess it's like college. you're an you're an adult. It, There's more freedom, right? And they expect right, you to know. right. Okay. I want to get I, so I want to get to Q had her hand up again. Okay. Q, did you have a question? Q, are you still here? 
Um, I just wanted to know what's the requirement as far as the TV size. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. You could have an eighty. You could have an eighty inch in your room. And then we're all gonna come watch TV. Yeah. Yeah, we'll come watch yeah. TVs in your room. I'm a, I'm gonna get a two inch. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Other other students have questions. Anything? Yeah, I have another question. Good. Go ahead. Um, Stephanie kind of mentioned that they had uh, sororities on campus. So what are the different fraternities they have oh. on campus and what are the requirements for each of those fraternities? Got you. We have, let me count since I live here. One, two, three. Yeah, we have f ooh, five, I almost said three, five um, fraternities on campus. We have the Merriman who live in the building I live in right now. Um, we have Phi uh, Kappa Pi. Is that the Merriman I just said? That's the Merriman. Phi, Phi, Kappa, so Phi. Phi Kappa Phi Del. Phi Del. Sigma Chi. Phi, Theta Chi. And then our co ed fraternity, which is the Tau. Yep. Yep. And all the fraternities live on um, um, the quads and the quads, like the upper campus area. Um, so they all have like a section in the building. So, for instance, in Brockway, um, you have one section that's the Sigma Chi's and another section that's the Theta Chi's. And so, for requirement, like, that's not like information that I'm privy to, mm -hmm. like how you can get in, but they have like recruitment. They have like a recruitment um, time, which is mm -hmm. the same time that sororities have their primary recruitment, um, just that their system is different. Um, it's, I, get, I don't wanna say it's not as rigorous as sororities where we have like three st uh, stages and all that. I know like they just give all bids, but I don't know like what are the requirements for you to get it. You know. You can learn all of the um, information about Greek life as you come in, I believe first semester, um, you can learn and then there's a recruitment period of time and all that. So um, we definitely have uh, several different sororities and fraternities on campus and they do all live on campus. Just like Stephanie said, fraternities are in the lower part on, on the quads and then Johnson Hall houses all of our three sororities. One thing I can add is that you do have to have a ripping GPA to be able to recruitment so you have to have gone through a semester at Ripon so you have to have gone through your school, get a GPA um, and then move on mm -hmm. to the recruitment step. Sure good I would say we have a few more minutes if there's any last other questions that we can answer for you. I believe Q has a question. Okay. No I don't have a question I forgot to put the hand down. Okay. Oh, finally. So she kind of mentioned that you have to have a GPA. So what's the GPA requirement to kind of get recruited by some of these fraternities? Does anyone know directly for fraternities? I'm not sure. Uh, I believe the GPA requirement <laughs> for fraternities is 2.5. Um, and I think for sororities, it's either 2.5 or 3.0, depending on which sorority. Steph, that's right. I know for 80 pi, it's, I think, a 3.0. I know for certain fraternities it's a 2.5 or 2.8 or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 2.5. And I think, and I can't speak for every sorority or fraternity, but there, I don't say there's ways around it, but like if you you're ready to, you know, improve your GPA or you're ready to work on it, you can still go through the process after working on your GPA. It doesn't mean that like, oh, because you didn't get to that GPA, that means like you band or whatever like you can still like you know work on it come back still join like it's not because your gpa isn't good or whatever so they're not gonna like want you i would also mention in the fall um, once you get to campus there will be a student activities fair that we typically do in the fall and that would be a great time for you to kind of explore different things uh, what clubs and organizations are around the Greek life you'll be able to kind of talk to students who are involved in those things um, maybe any of you folks Stephanie Anisha Courtney or Mamadou could talk about some of the clubs on campus that are popular put a plug for my club I'm sorry Anisha I have to go first yes think live ripping live is the student entertainment board on campus so we organize like all, not all the events like most of the events on campus like that is not rest live or other clubs it's us we have one of the biggest events during the spring fest where we usually have like a day activity and some night activities um they will have like um things that you can pick up we'll have music um tie-dye 
and we'll have like one time we had bungee jumping we had like this um what do you call it? you sit on the the bull and you be going around yeah oh, yeah bull riding yeah that thing yeah. <laughs> the bull right yeah fun stuff like that we had like minute golf and I we had a concert but you know COVID so we can't do all that sad um uh, but we do things like that fun stuff um what other clubs am I in I'm no just give my niche at the, 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 the yeah um, so we have like 50 different um or 40 plus uh clubs and organizations to be a part of so you can always find your little um niche um at Ripon College you know whether that be gaming or um like I'm a part of a diversity group called Black Student Union I'm the president um so that's something if you want to be involved in like we have ASA, which is Asian Students Association, La Unida, Queer Straight Alliance, plus like seven other diversity groups. If you're more musically inclined, we have musical groups and ensembles like Choral Union. Uh, let's see what else. We have like volunteering clubs called like, I think Circle K. Um, we also have like, I don't even know, like exercise science club, gaming club, ultimate frisbee club. So a lot of different clubs to be a part of that you will definitely find out like your first week when you get here in the student activities fair. It's gonna be like a whole bunch of table booths uh, with everybody like advertising their clubs and wanting new members. So yeah, just be on the lookout for the student food. activities fair. And giving out free food and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, we love free food and free merch too. They always do that. Yeah, that's one thing about Ribbon. If it's an event, there's gonna be food. We broke college students who like to eat. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Technically, you're paying. <laughs> so someone just asked about move in, and I, I misspoke a little bit. I believe move in for non-athletes is August 28th, which is a Saturday. That is correct. Um, and yes, yeah, so August 28th, if you're an athlete, a fall athlete, there are some different dates out there, and you would hear something from your coach. Other yeah, questions? Um, once you get yeah. your once you get your housing assignment, then you'll get like the exact where to come, what to do, whatever. Right. Sorry, yes, Brayden, I and what to do. No, that's all right. Is August twenty eighth the official moving date? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. It, it is. Yes. Again, unless you're an athlete and unless you're involved or coming to the momentum program which you would be invited to that. Um, so if you haven't been invited, then that you're not part of that. Um, but those are some different dates too. Um, other questions anyone has? If you need to run, we are at an, you know, eight o'clock here. If you need to run, go for it. Otherwise we'll stick around for maybe two, three more minutes. Anybody has any last minute questions? I do appreciate y'all hanging on. Um, this has been fun. It's really enjoyable for me to see students. I've seen you before, Bryson. I, I see you, um, students that uh, you know we're we're gonna know you in the in the fall. And again, many of you are already enrolled. Some of you are going to enroll, and some of you are still thinking. So um, please let us know if we can help with anything. There are additional sessions the week of April twelfth. We have some sessions you might want to look forward to. Um, we'll do some walking tours of Wilmore, um, the Center for Diversity. Uh, we've got uh, more advising um, sessions, um, financial aid questions. So look for those coming up. Again, anyone who attends a Zoom session like this gets their name in that drawing. Uh, that drawing, there's things posted on Facebook, but they include a lot of ripping gear, uh, clothing and jackets and things. And then we also have a couple of cool uh, baskets for your room. So there's a Keurig with some coffee and some mugs and things you can win. Um, there's a, a foam uh, topper for your bed and a nice ripping blanket as a prize. So there's some really cool things. So uh, if you haven't already signed up for that on April, I'm going to say it again, I think it's the 29th. Um, feel free to sign up for that day. Uh, we will be joined that evening by President Massetti for a, a moment or two to kind of chat and say hello to everybody. So yes, April 29th, I think it's the 27th, 29th um, is our senior party and raffle drawing. Um, I want to thank Courtney and Mamadou and Stephanie and Nisha for helping us out this evening. I appreciate your time. And um, again, last minute questions before we sign off for the evening. Oh yeah, I do have a question now. Yeah. 
Um, so when we apparently do move in, are we allowed to have one of the panelists up here as our roommates, or is that kind of like off the table? And I didn't hear all of the question, Franz. Can you say it one more time? Are we time? allowed to have some other student, like on some of the students that are here right now, as one of our roommates, or is that? Like, oh yeah, yeah. So good question. So if you in the in the time between now and you know filling your housing form or in between July, if you find someone that you feel like you would get along with and you guys are talking and want a room together, yes, you can do that. You would need to email Mark Nichols, the um, housing director, and you would both email him so he would know that you both want to live together. You can certainly do that. Um, again, if you have questions about stuff. Uh, you should have my email and things um, from these sessions, so feel free to let me know and I can help you or get you in touch with your admission counselor. And there's Mark's uh, information from Courtney. Thank you. Um, again, housing director. So if you have questions about that, he can help. And then Braden, did you have one more question? Okay, so I'll, I heard that over the breaks that you're allowed to stay on campus. Is that correct? Okay. Um, some of the breaks I have to go back home since I live on the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. um, can I leave certain stuff of mine in that dorm or will oh. be or will we be switching dorms? Yeah, so unless you're changing rooms for some reason from what from when you leave to when you get back, you can leave your stuff there from August 28th when you move in until move out in May. Um, if, okay. um, and then since you do live across the country, um, Stephanie uses this, a lot of out of state students mm -hmm. use this during the summertime, you can leave some of those big bulky items here in our storage. So if you have a futon, if you have a fridge, um, you want to leave your winter clothes here, whatever, um, you can keep that all in our storage as long as, um, there's space for you, um, mm -hmm. which there usually always is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Cool. Brayden uh, is from California, Mamadou. No way. Where about? Uh, I live in Santa Clarita, just oh, north okay. of Los Angeles. Okay, I'm born. I'm born and raised actually in Los Angeles, so not. Nice. You're about 45 minutes away. And I don't know if Josh Schind Schindler, you're still on. You're from California. Yeah, I am. Where about? Um, by by San Bernardino. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Wow. We need more California, more Southern California people out here. Very so, cool. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait for the cold, man. It gets too hot here. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I'll tell you what, man. You, you might be contemplating that once you get here <laughs> in the middle of January. Well, I, mean, I moved, I I moved to California. I moved to oh. California from Dallas, Texas. And oh. so uh, I've been living in hot all my life. So I'd rather yeah. live. Oh, in my cold. gosh. Well, yeah, I, so I, I'm gonna I, see you in January then in February and see how, yeah. how, how you're looking then. How about that? I <laughs> love it. Right. I should yeah. say we have students here, of course, from Wisconsin, but we have California, we have Maryland, we have um, Texas, uh, Illinois. Where else do I see a student? Florida. Did I say Florida? So, Florida yeah, and Maryland. Maybe, need Iowa. To go to bed. Say it again. Florida and Maryland folk need to go to bed. Isn't it like 10 p.m.? I don't, know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's only 9 p.m. I'm sure oh, nine, we okay. could uh, I'm sure we could sit here all night, but I'm I'm gonna um go ahead and end this session. I again appreciate you all hanging in and talking. It was good to hear from you and chat and see you and uh, wish you the best and have a wonderful rest of your week. Yeah, thank you very much. See you in the fall. Have a good one.